are there really satellites in space? Most satellite photos are fake. One of the first things you notice when typing satellites into a search engine is that there are no real photos of satellites. These are the first results on Google. They are presented as real, but closer examination reveals products of graphic design. We have a lot of satellite photos, photos taken from satellites, but where are the photos of satellites? Was there ever a satellite that took a picture of another satellite? They say satellites can take crisp and detailed high-resolution images of any place on Earth. So, what about taking a crisp and detailed picture of another satellite? A long dive into search engines finally brought up one single photo purported to be a real photo of a satellite in space. The image is taken from an article titled, Check out these images of a satellite taken in orbit by another satellite. On that page, I even get another one. Here it is. It amazes me that satellites capable of taking high-res images of our streets and even of galaxies far away, provide grainy photography when it comes to the much closer satellites, or even the Apollo moon landing site. Why can't we get clear pictures of those? This is a satellite image of Lower Manhattan, clear and detailed. Here's an image of a galaxy far far away, taken by Hubble. How interesting that this galaxy has the exactly same outline as Algeria. If we can't even take clear images of a nearby satellite, how are we making photos of distant galaxies? Does the Hubble image look real to you, or does it look like something created in Adobe Illustrator? Satellites would melt in the thermosphere. Satellites operate in what scientists call the thermosphere, which is approximately 54 miles to 500 miles above sea level, and the exosphere, which is up to 1,000 miles above sea level. Telstar, the satellite claimed to have broadcast the first picture, phone call, faxes, and the first transatlantic TV feed, was said to be 750 miles high. According to our own NASA, the thermosphere is 4500 degrees Fahrenheit, or 2482 Celsius. Our science also says that the temperature at which metal melts is 2758 degrees to 2500 degrees Fahrenheit. Aluminum already melts at 1220 degrees Fahrenheit. But the thermosphere is supposed to be 4500 degrees Fahrenheit, which would, of course, completely destroy the satellite, no question about it. What does this mean? Either the thermosphere is not 4500 degrees Fahrenheit, or our satellites never reach the thermosphere, or, neither satellites nor thermosphere exist. The scientific community need to get their story straight. Where is all the space debris? We're told, Earth is surrounded by tens of thousands of pieces of space debris and satellite junk. Add to that more than 7,700 active satellites orbiting Earth, and many more inactive ones floating around as space junk. More than 6,000 of these are said to have been sent to space by Elon Musk. Why don't satellites ever bump into space debris? Why are all photos taken with satellites of space and Earth, clear, sharp, and void of space debris? Musk's plan is to have 42,000 satellites in space in the coming years. Wow. What about all the space debris? What about protecting the incredibly expensive satellites? One satellite costs an average of $350 million. This does not include the cost of launching and maintaining it. But, didn't we also learn that space debris burns in the atmosphere or falls back to Earth? Yes, if it's low enough. But most space debris is said to be too high for that, and just keeps on floating around. When watching a film of a satellite circling Earth, we find stuff as in this video. Where is all that space debris? Where is the satellite junk? Where are the other satellites? You could argue that the pieces are too small to make a difference, like how debris on the road won't stop your car. Even so, I found no news item in which anything in space ever bumped into another. If there are tens of thousands of objects orbiting Earth, wouldn't they ever collide and cause damage to the sensitive equipment? Or perhaps the trajectory of every piece of space junk is already accounted for, and new satellites are put on a fixed trajectory that evades the pieces. No, unfortunately the orbit of a satellite changes over time, according to this entry. Internet comes from undersea cables. A lot of people are of the belief that satellites are mainly for data transfer, internet, phone calls, TV, communications, etc. But this isn't true. I posed an interesting question to Google. The answer that came back is from the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, a government website. 
It says that over 95% of international data and voice transfers go through fiber optic cables on the world's seafloors. Hmm. Amazing. I guess I was under the wrong impression that satellites are mainly for data transfer. Why is this a common misconception? Who gave us this false idea and why? If most data is transferred in ocean cables, what are satellites for? Online I read that satellites are too slow for internet. They have high latency and low bandwidth. But what about Elon Musk's Starlink? Don't his satellites promise the same kind of bandwidth and speed as cable internet? Either satellite internet is not really slow, or Starlink doesn't use satellites. Both can't be true. What else are they used for? We are told we need satellites for weather forecasts, taking pictures of Earth and space and GPS. In 2023 alone, 207 rockets were successfully launched into space. What for? More satellite images of Earth. More weather forecasts. More internet. I doubt it. We already have enough satellites to cover those basics. One space object that does appear to be verifiably real, is the International Space Station, one of two space stations currently orbiting Earth. It can be seen through telescopes. But the space station is only 254 miles above Earth. And as real as the space station appears to be, it hasn't sent back any photos of satellites. On the other hand, this video seems to cast doubt on whether the space station is real. The three main pieces of evidence in the video are, one, one person adhering to time delay on a call with Earth, while the other person was reacting in real time. Two, astronauts being supplied with jerseys of the Super Bowl winner without any rocket having gone up during that time. Three, evidence of astronauts wearing harnesses and operating on green screen. Google Earth says that their images are taken with satellite and aircraft. I use Google Earth a lot for research. To me, it seems as if the images that are closer up, the aircraft ones, are real, but the further you get away from the ground, the more fake or drawn it looks. How does a satellite get its speed? Another head-scratcher is the insane speed of a satellite. The speed of the fastest jet in the world is 4500 miles per hour. A satellite, then, is more than three times as fast. I wondered how these satellites are fueled and maintained. I looked it up and learned that satellites aren't fueled or maintained. Once they get old, they become inactive space junk. When you point your satellite dish in a certain direction, you can keep it that way, without the need for adjustment or correction. If you move the dish a little, you could lose your good connection. This would indicate that the signal being received is from an unmoving station, rather than a satellite circling the Earth at crazy speed. The GPS lie. It said our global positioning system that our phones, apps and digital maps rely on, requires satellites. No satellites, no GPS, they say. But that's not true. This video is from 1976, produced by Mitter Corporation, a major Air Force engineer. This is long before the public was using GPS. Air Force and Navy were using a precise position location and navigation system called ITNS, ITAX, and SeekBus. These were finally merged into a system called JTIDS, or Joint Tactical Information Distribution System, headquartered at the Air Force Base in Bedford, Massachusetts. The video showcases how the US military created a world grid and relay stations using ships and airplanes, with which they could pinpoint and define the position and location of anything. Without satellites. If you don't wish to watch the video, I've just summarized it in the last paragraph. If GPS was used without satellites already 50 years ago, why are we today told that GPS is because of satellites? According to the Wikipedia entry on GPS, the Global Positioning System GPS, originally Navstar GPS, is a satellite-based radio navigation system owned by the United States government and operated by the United States Space Force. The article also says the GPS project was started by the U.S. Department of Defense in 1973. The first prototype spacecraft was launched in 1978, and the full constellation of 24 satellites became operational in 1993. The word JTIDS is not once mentioned in the entire article, as if it never existed, and GPS was about spacecraft from the beginning. Are there really satellites in space? But if there are no satellites in space, then what are rockets for? What payload are they transporting? Where are they going? Some say rockets go nowhere, it's all just for show. 
Others say the rockets fly to secret and hidden continents beyond the Antarctic. Still others say they are weapons directed at the dome or firmament in the sky. I don't know. What do you think? Knowledge dissemination relies on you. Share this video far and wide. Now, it's time for me to hear from you. What are your thoughts on this video? If you found it interesting or informative, please consider giving it a thumbs up and sharing it with your friends and family. Remember, the more people know about these important topics, the better. Before we wrap up, I want to extend a huge thank you to all the individuals who dedicated their time and energy to research and gather the information presented in this video. Their efforts are truly commendable and have helped shed light on important topics that affect us all. Make sure to hit the subscribe button.